After years of construction, quiet has come to the recently restored floodplain of Redwood Creek. Young native plants are thriving and branching out, and wildlife is settling in to its newly restored home. I feel like we've done exactly what we set out to do. The landscape is what it's meant to be, and human hands um, aren't interfering with that at this point. I, I feel really happy that we've really pulled it off. <laughs> Visitors seem really happy about it too, as many of us explore for the first time the landscape and ecosystem of Lower Redwood Creek, much of it dramatically altered during the fourth phase of the restoration project in late 2013. The artistic feeling of it mm. is so different. Mm. You really feel like you're coming into an artwork mm. of nature. Mm -hmm. Clearly, something was wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this looks right. Mm -hmm. it, it really does. It's very impressive. Mm -hmm. For starters, we now park our cars in a brand new place. We pause to touch a new tactile model of Redwood Creek's entire watershed, from the summit of Mount Tamalpais to Muir Beach, interpreted in Braille for those of us who cannot see. We cross a long new bridge that spans a much widened Redwood Creek floodplain, slowing down to enjoy sensational views all around, while also learning a little about the plants and animals who live here. Many of us then follow a broad new path, leading to a dramatic view of Muir Beach. I mean, this is amazing, really. All of a sudden, we've gone to a different world. A special mat creating a firm and stable surface that can be used easily by everyone, including people in wheelchairs, points us towards the popular beach, next to dune fields being protected and secured by native plants and guarded by great blue herons. All around us, birds are fishing, river otters are frolicking in the flowing creek. People are enjoying themselves too, appreciating the results of Redwood Creek's restoration and grateful to the people who made it happen. It's a positive thing. <laughs> Here's something positive. <laughs> it's great to know that there are people looking to the future, you. future generations. I'm proud of the fact that someone else sees great value and great, you know, just the, the experience that they're having is so that they want to reach out and say thank you. Oh, well, it's early May 2014, and over the past five years, this spot in Marin County where Redwood Creek reaches towards its rendezvous with the Pacific Ocean at Muir Beach has been utterly transformed. Well, the creek has been moved and reconfigured. Surrounding hillsides and drainages have been reshaped. A parking lot has been rotated, and tens of thousands of native plants have taken root. A threatened coho salmon, steelhead trout, and red-legged frogs, and many other animals have been given a new lease on life in the 21st century. It's a very successful story of planning, perseverance, and partnership, and those involved in it have a lot to celebrate. First are two fantastic project managers, Carolyn Shoulders and Sharon Farrell. Thank you so much. On a clear, crisp, and blustery day, Many of those who played important roles in transforming Redwood Creek gather to celebrate their success. They represent many institutions and they all contributed skills and resources absolutely essential to the restoration's positive outcome. The collaborative work of all these partners was led by Carolyn Shoulders from the National Park Service and Sharon Farrell from the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy. I think I just think it's an example of of what we would really want to see going forward in the 20th 21st century. That, that we've learned from our mistakes in how we've managed ecosystems in the 20th century, and this is an example of how we can do it better. The upper portions of Redwood Creek are relatively intact. The creek flows seven scenic miles from near the summit of Mount Tamalpais State Park past ancient redwoods in Muir Woods National Monument before reaching its once troubled lower floodplain and final brief lunge across Muir Beach to the open ocean. Before the restoration began, Old agricultural roads, levees, and the visitor parking lot blocked and narrowed Redwood Creek's channel in the lower floodplain, choking it with sediment 
and making it unsustainable for the survival of threatened species, including coho and steelhead, the struggle to spawn and survive here every year. For Redwood Creek to regain its historic natural functions and flourish again as a resilient and healthy ecosystem for fish and all other native plants and animals, the artificial blockages in the floodplain had to be removed and the landscape all around had to be redesigned, re-engineered and rebuilt during four short summer and fall construction seasons. From the start, it was always a race against time, resources and the weather. The whole uh, period of construction felt like it was sort of like a, a high stakes ball game, <laughs> you know, and the <laughs> clock is going to end at a certain point and there's a certain amount of things that have to happen and you don't know how it's going to all get played out. Uh, and, uh, and it was dramatic. The restoration of Lower Redwood Creek and its surrounds started in 2009. The restoration team created the lovely lagoon we see today, now teeming with life and flanked by strategically planted native vegetation. In 2010, a badly disfigured and eroded hillside and drainage system, which had washed vast amounts of silt down into the Redwood Creek floodplain, was recontoured. Deep gullies were filled in and replaced by more natural watercourses, and a steep old trail was decommissioned and realigned to fit the reformed landscape and eliminate further erosion. In the floodplain itself, ponds were prepared for red-legged and other frogs and a new and wider main channel for Redwood Creek began to take shape. In 2011, the entire new main channel for Lower Redwood Creek was completed. Gravel was layered at precise depths in the creek bed to serve the needs of spawning salmon. Woody shelters were placed in specifically chosen locations along the banks to provide shade and sanctuaries for the fish and a gentle backwater was created where young coho and steelhead can escape the creek's sometimes strong currents, hide from predators, and gain the strength and size they need to venture out into the open ocean, survive as adults, and someday return to spawn and sustain their ancient cycle of life. Also in 2011, the old roads and levees were removed once and for all and many pieces of a carefully crafted ecological mosaic were at last connected. But one more big job especially needed doing to fully and finally assemble an ecosystem here that can flourish unaided in the decades ahead. That chore and a few others took one final construction season to complete. In a nutshell what we've done is we've removed one of the largest barriers to floodplain function here at Mio Beach. We've actually rotated the parking lot so if you can imagine it's almost like it was on a hinge. It was once facing this direction and then we've rotated 90 degrees. So now it's going east-west. In 2013, the old parking lot was closed and public access to Muir Beach was limited for six months. About 20,000 cubic yards of soil were excavated and moved to create a new parking area and widen Redwood Creek's floodplain, adding almost one acre to the new ecosystem where it was needed most just above the lagoon. Permanent restrooms were built. A new picnic area was established. The tactile model was secured in place and the new bridge, about 445 feet long, was installed. By the end of the year, Redwood Creek was at last ready for its future and for its first big test, which came soon enough during a near record rainfall. Over three very intense days between Friday the 7th and Sunday the 9th of February 2014, a big Pacific storm poured nearly two feet of rain on Mount Tamalpais, sending a huge volume of water down the Redwood Creek watershed towards Muir Beach. But the height of the flood less than 24 hours ago, everywhere where I'm standing, was underwater. Yeah, it was really exciting. It worked perfectly. It worked really as our hydrologist would have modeled it virtually. There were no problems um, as a result of it. And the other thing we know is that in an event like that in the past, the flooding at the homes upstream would have been much worse. All in all, 
fantastic. And it opened up the mouth of the creek, so we finally got coho spawners coming up. The barriers had been removed, and the water rushing down Redwood Creek had a chance to spread out in its expansive new floodplain. Now a 28-acre integrated ecosystem, which only a few years earlier had been a seriously fragmented and dysfunctional landscape. For the first time in many decades, Redwood was a natural creek again, behaving as the restoration team and all its partners had long hoped it would, beginning to serve the needs of nature and all of us, rain or shine, and for generations to come. We always thought that by having a natural system that visitors would also enjoy it more. You know, they like it, they're enjoying it, they're appreciating that it's not just a walk to the beach, it's actually a whole experience of a natural landscape. A final phase of the work to address an undersized bridge slightly upstream at the restoration site is not expected to occur for several years. Meantime, if you'd like to know more about the Redwood Creek restoration effort, and other projects to care for the environment and improve the visitor experience on and around Mount Tamalpais, please visit our website. We leave you with a list of the organizations that deserve special recognition for making the restoration of Redwood Creek a successful reality.